Good morning. I'm Brigadier General Ross Kaufman, Director of the Next Generation Combat Vehicles Cross-Functional Team. I'm sitting here today in Yuma, Arizona, uh, where just incredible, incredible support uh, to NGCV and the entire Army Futures Command as we go th through one of our projects. But today I want to talk about the Maneuver Conference. And uh, really excited to speak to you about the focus of the Maneuver Conference this year, both on the lethality and warfighting side, as well as leader development. Probably my two favorite discussion topics. And uh, I'm going to try to bring you up to speed on what NGCV CFT is doing for you in the future of warfighting. Now, you, you know about the portfolio. You know about the OMFV and the AMPV, MPF, our robotics efforts, and uh, a decision in the out years of what the next Abrams will look like. But what I want to talk about today is the battlefield of 2035. Okay, as we look to the future, what are the key elements that are going to allow us to be successful against our potential adversaries? I firmly believe that there are three elements that we must as an Army focus on like a laser beam and achieve success and then promulgate that success across our force so that we can maintain our way of life. Those three areas are robotics, artificial intelligence, and artificial intelligence cousin autonomy. At NGCV CFT, we're focused on each of those three but in different factors. So I want to talk about them, you know, what they are and what they are not. So the robotic combat vehicle effort is a payload agnostic effort so that you can get robots in the most dangerous places on Earth while humans have decision space and time so that we can make the right decisions at the right time to affect our, our, force, our enemy forces. Look, as we do robotic uh, experiments, like the one we just did in Fort Carson, Colorado, with the awesome, steadfast, and loyal team, we learn learning a lot. We're on a campaign of learning, and you know, the lessons that we learned last month in Fort Carson included the, the length of the tether, meaning the radio link between uh, the robot and the control vehicle. It needs to... Uh, really be at least half the distance of the main gun on the control vehicle. Additionally, we learned that the science and technology effort for a soldier and machine interface is way ahead of where we thought it was. So the, where the robots are on the battlefield, how we control them, how we can see our situational awareness is far beyond what we thought. And finally, we learned that purpose-built robots are needed to truly gain an appreciation of how we are going to fight in the future. But the incredible troopers there and steadfast and loyal were able to execute zone reconnaissance, route reconnaissance, screen line with robots. And for anyone who's not a fan of a robot on the future battlefield, I always ask them one question. If you were in the defense, if you're in a screen line, would you want a persistent set of eyes forward of you that could tell you where the enemy is and where the enemy is not? And every time I get a resounding, of course. This is all weather, all the time, persistent surveillance forward of you. We can put anything on there. We can put smoke. We can put chemical detectors. The nastiest places on earth Whatever you want to do inside of that space, we can put it on a robot. The control is a little touchy. And look, we're in the same place as all of our potential adversaries, right? The teleoperation, the waypoint navigation, uh, the de putting in a start and end point and allowing the, the vehicle to maneuver there on its own. Everyone's about there. It's really the human interface where I think we have an advantage over our adversaries. We're continuing to, to make that better and better. It's not there yet. But again, campaign of learning so that we, as the United States Army, will have robots in our future that will help save lives and give commanders decision space. Robots are not 
uh, going to be killing machines that can arbitrarily decide what lives and dies. There will always be a human in the loop. That human interface uh, is critical for the control. But where, where we are today is we've got two humans controlling one robot. And by 2035, we're hoping to get 12 robots controlled by one human. And we measure that by the number of interactions or interventions that the human controller must take uh, to, to control the vehicle on the battlefield. Now let's talk about artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is going to help us in several ways, but really it's going to allow the machine to do best what it was designed to do. It's process large amounts of information quickly and make recommendations uh, to the human. It can classify targets. It can identify targets. Uh, artificial intelligence can uh, help the crew decide faster which is the most dangerous, dangerous target it's being presented with. Artificial intelligence can help us with prognostics and diagnostics. And on the Next Generation Combat Vehicle Cross-Functional Team, we are absolutely looking at what AI systems will best go inside the vehicle and also on control vehicles and across uh, our command posts to allow us to maximize the capabilities uh, within uh, the computer and the human. Again, humans will always be in the lethality loop, but if we can reduce the cognitive burden through AI systems on the humans, then commanders can spend more time making decisions and doing analysis than actually trying to do the mundane tasks that a machine can do better for us. And finally, autonomy. The autonomous systems that we've demonstrated, both in the robotic effort as well as in the target acquisition uh, and change detection. That, those autonomous systems, again, allow uh, vehicles to drive from point to point. There are some challenges with it. We have the same challenges that the commercial industry has putting uh, autonomous cars on the road, but ours are a little, little more challenging due to terrain and constantly changing. Uh, it takes us about six years to train a uh, non-commissioned officer from the time he or she is a private to their staff sergeant as a vehicle commander to move across the terrain like water, to know not to go over the military crest of the hill. These autonomous systems, they have to learn that. And we are absolutely uh, focused on, in that vein to provide you and our soldiers the autonomy uh, level that will reduce your cognitive burden and allow us to fight and win. Look, there's a lot going on. And this Warrior Corner is just really meant to whet your appetite on the systems and the areas that we're focused on. We need your help. We need your ideas. So if you uh, go to uh, at NGCV underscore CFT, or you can hit me up direct at at Ross underscore Kaufman, give me your ideas. Send us, send us we will absolutely get back to you. But how would you fight with AI in the future? How would you fight with robots in the future? And how would you uh, really use autonomy to your advantage? So from Yuma, Arizona, and my hometown of Detroit, Michigan, for the last couple of years, I hope you have a great maneuver conference, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.